Alrighty, so let's hide that. Week nine, we are halfway through this course and this week is just such a great week. I mean, I know you may or may not have that feeling as you move through it, but here's what I've been saying. And I just ended up creating uh, the Learn Together video and I created one additional video that you will find on the instruction for week nine code along because I think having a little more context for this will be helpful. But what I want you to keep in mind as you move through this content is everything you're doing here, you're going to need to recreate in your dev first in your learn together. And then so you get like you're going to see it, the pattern of how to do a more complex DOM rendering, how to use local storage. I mean, how to use a UUID to target an item. And what you'll do then is you'll turn around and, and try to implement those same concepts and you'll learn together. And here's my big suggestion is now is the perfect time because it is going to be fresh in your head to actually attempt to, you know, go ahead and set up your dev one uh, folder in the private repo, copy over your code and start thinking about how you're going to implement this or even attempt to implement this right into your dev one because it's going to be the freshest as you end this week because we do have another uh week on uh this section eight uh, but a lot of what you've you're learning in this first part for first part first part is really going to be what you're going to need to implement okay so i want to talk about that and i hope you hear me i hope you do it because the sooner you start thinking about it right and you can get help the sooner you can get help um and here's the other thing and, I, and this is going to be a little over repeat but i think it's worth talking about when andrew is writing his notes and his to do he's writing a very simplified version where he's getting the user input and all he's doing is turn around and storing that input in this case, we were seeing it before this week, just storing it in what we call volatile storage, our RAM, you can think of as our systems. So we're moving that to storing that into a uh, more, I'm not going to say permanent, but it is a persistent uh, place. But the, the point I'm trying to make here is that we in both our learn together and our dev are doing more than just getting the user input. We're processing that in through our code, our decision first for the learn together for our decision code, right? Making a daily decision or in the case of our dev, right? We're going to be getting the user input. And again, based on whatever project concept you came up with there. Okay. So I just want you to have that context in your mind as you move through this. One of the things that I really have noticed in some of your learn together, and I saw this reflected in some of the um, co um, dev work as well, is that many students, and it's really understandable why you do this, I just want you to start thinking about writing functions that actually work together. Uh, in this sense, many of you will write a function and you'll call it immediately, write another function and call it immediately. And the idea is actually to have one function call another function that might actually call a third or a fourth function to do a bit of work that then retrieves that down, that then ultimately comes to the original uh, function that called it, which will go on to do other work. But this is the way you write effective functions. They need to be fairly short, right, and work together. And when you do that pattern, the learn together work is much easier. I've seen a couple of you really struggle with, with the way your output was working with the decision code is getting it to work in the pattern of first an array of objects, right? Then now the button uh, and then in week eight is actually creating the inputs. So it's really a good idea. As a matter of fact, I talked about this with the learn together for week eight. I ended up doing almost, a, almost I'd say an 70% rewrite of my decision code because I started thinking about it differently. It's not a decision. It's a suggestion <laughs> that I then can tell by doing some data validation how well that decision actually met my needs. Again, I kind of went crazy because it was fun. But OK, so I just want to talk about that. And then uh, I'm going to go back over here just to make sure I because I think I've covered now 
the pieces, right? My suggestions on dev one, writing good stackable functions. Oh, and this idea, like, so what you're going to see, and again, this is a little bit of a repeat, but what you're going to see with the, with the um, notes app and the to-do app from Andrew is a design pattern, okay, for how to write functions that are stackable in this sense. So, when I talk about in Dev Zero, I don't want you to write actual use code you learned. In this case, for the learn together, it's okay to lean some into that to get the experience of doing it. But the idea is that you come up with your own functions that do this concept. So just to give you a visual for what I mean, here's my learn together week nine code. And I've set a breakpoint here at my render suggestions, right? So instead of, um, Again, I went through and changed all of my naming because I wanted it to reflect what it does. So if I refresh first, I'm just going to uh, go ahead and, oh, yeah, because in this case, it's actually going to re-render on the page load, okay? So what I can do is I'm already in my refresh, and so I my first function, and here's what I kind of want you to, and, and this is not like to understand completely, but it's called a call stack. So when I run, when I invoke this path, uh, this function, I'm passing in an array of objects. I then, then I can see in my call stack my first um, function called my second function, and this is the line from which it was called, right? So they're working together. It's doing some work, right? For in this case, there's a for each happening here. It in the for each is calling another function. So you can see here, we're at the place where we're one, two, three, four deep, because what you're doing is really allowing your functions to work together to achieve your output, rather than just to write functions that are running on their own. It's just harder to manage, it's harder to maintain. And again, it's the design pattern that we're seeing in this course. Uh, and, and you hopefully will be seeing this, and I'm just bringing it to your awareness so that you will start writing, because this is one of the things I look for in your Dev 1, is a progression of writing good stackable or functions that we say work together. Okay, so now we're actually on, <laughs> uh, actually we came back, we came back to the for each here, and now I'm actually doing my next uh, object in here. But I just wanted to show you that, okay, to give you the concept there. And uh, this is what I've already said. I definitely recommend at the end of this week or as you're moving through it to think about your Dev 1 because everything you're learning in this section, you are going to have to implement in your own code base. And having a good understanding of it is really going to be helpful. Okay. And the last thing I'll say is on the learn together, I talked about implementing some additional validation. If you want to know more about that, yeah, come see me during office hours. I love to talk about stuff like this. I'll show you the example of how I did it. So I look forward to uh, seeing more of you there. All right. Peace out. Have a great week nine. Wow. Halfway through. That's crazy.